Joseph Pane. The division was uh, uh, communication systems division, principally design equipment. And I would, that's it. <laughs> um, where, what was your first project that you got? The first on? project I was hired for a project called Oroden, Automatical Digital Network, a very major program for RCA in about $60 million in 1960. Uh, I joined that program. I was a uh, senior engineer on the program, and I had the responsibility of um, integration on the site of all the equipment. That's it. <laughs> and what were other major projects that you had the opportunity to work on? Well, that lasted a few years as a major program, and I went to, to uh, ATL, uh, Advanced Technology, for a year working on a um, concept or the dual in line, in which it was a kind of original chip out of the mountain printed circuit boards. Um, and then there was a program which we um, call one IVCS, Interior Voice Communication System for the Navy, uh, on a big ship called LHA. The LHA was a landing helicopter assault. That was a major program, it required a lot of traveling to California to meet with the um, Litton people to define the system, um, make a milestone and so on, yeah. And then I got involved into secure communications. Uh, this is now around uh, 1970. Um, in security communication, principally, we worked for a National Security Agency, the Department of Defense and National Security Agency. And our portion of RCA was to design equipment which met the criteria of um, preventing the enemy from tampering with whatever the people in the field, uh, they were working, saying, or transmitting data or voice. And that program, eventually be called Falcon, which you have a, a plate to hear on. And it became part of a family of 11 pieces of equipment for the various application. There was an overall system, which was called the TriTAC, um, and had several major systems. RCA portions was used on all of them. But the major program, the major portion of that was the voice communication system called KY-68. We have one here. And we built uh, about 60,000 of those, something like that, through the years. Uh, and eventually, in 1979, that became a, a production program. RCA had never built equipment in large quantity because they were very happy as a system design house, they were recognized throughout the United States, they're doing very well. Let somebody else create, resolve the problem for manufacturing equipment. But in fact, that um, became fortunately one of my uh, tormenting ideas that we should build equipment. And it wasn't easy because RCA was making a relatively good profit. Everybody was happy, we were getting raises. So why all the contracts that come in the house, they were called cost plus. It means whatever it costs you to build, it's okay. We'll give you a profit on that. And at that time, a profit might have been seven, eight percent. And so it's a pretty reasonable thing. The, uh, the idea of introducing a new division to build equipment that RCA built, I mean designed, was new for RCA, and in fact, it was also new for NSA. But we won this contract, it was $50 million. It was a cost plus. My idea was to tell the government that we, we change this from cost plus to fixed price, and we had to return them money. That didn't go well at RCA at all, because you know, you're crazy, you know, financial people, they want the position. Well, make a long story short, about two years later, we uh, relented, relented a bit, and we won another contract. By then, by then the 
overhead rate was changed, which means the setting up this new division was on the way. And we get one, the first contract was a $62 million, though the same kind of equipment, a beautiful win. Um, so that absorbed a good part of my life. Now, through this career, I was growing up manager, directors, and, but in 1979, uh, when we had this major win, uh, I was made an independent division still reporting to a local vice president that was still in the Penn Division because we begin to ship equipment from that division. And, in fact, in uh, 1992, when the division was, 1991, when the division was officially created, I uh, had the honor of being the first vice president of that, that division. Continuing in that, there's a... Um, uh, what, do you want to ask another question? Or this this is okay. In studying nineteen, in fact, in nineteen eighty one, eighty two, when this became division, the NSA was interested in the new project, which was called the Stu Three. That's the last name. Secure telephone units. The previous secure telephone two and one were essentially the size of a uh, like this cabinet, thirty-five thousand dollars. The one that was scoped by NSA, specified by NSA, and given to three for competition to three producer or the company and one general manager to uh, assure open. Operability of well, all three systems. That's not the way it would. Um, but that began to be a really a significant change because of the um, we at RCA were used in the whole industry. You make a breadboards, you make the first articles, you test them, and then you release them. It's about five year term before you put an equipment in. With this new system, and they say had a, such a terrific advantage in the, that uh, industry. We became essentially good partners with NSA. It never happened before. You know, they began to have a, a meetings that um, were discussing all three people, even though we were fighting one another to get the most of the money. Uh, we begin to relax a little bit and say, "Here's, here's, here's one of my equipment work." And, so the people in Boston or the GT, they were the overall manager, it could make a sense. That, uh, uh, so it was enormous, enormous uh, success. And uh, we have a sample here, this is the white ones, two, three there. We built 200,000 in Camden of that. Um, after that, the success of that is the next unit where Jim is familiar with, and that is the uh, stew, just the sti secure telephone equipment, which is a successor to that, a successor to that with more data, more capabilities, faster. But the important part is that this equipment went from $30,000 to $2,400, the first one, the KY, this 23. The other one was a little more expensive because there were a lot more complexity involved. So this is a story of equipment that I have on RCA. What else? What else do you want to know? <laughs> um, well, it sounds like you got to work your way up through the ranks pretty well. Uh, how did everything change when RCA merged with GE? Well, significantly. No one was prepared for that step. RCA was ran by a uh, President, which unfortunately, three consecutive ones were um, accountant, finance people, and they only look at the bottom page, at the bottom line. They didn't look at develop engineering, the product that we know. But nonetheless, when the um, the, the the announcement came, the announcement came that um, 
G was buying. It was a shock. I mean, a shock. I was a very busy. I had a one a contract, and this is, this is in now November 1985 when they made the announcement. Just a week before, I had a one a contract for the uh, Falcon program equipment, five hundred sixty million dollars for an for RCA. And the program was a four point five billion dollars income for the GT income, so I, I had a pretty good, solid uh, stay in that, and this, uh, with that kind of a success. But I, I wasn't very happy. Uh, GE was a um, great company. They always had a management resources that are unbelievable, but the. We at RCA essentially lost out to the way they reorganized things. I, I left uh, two years after the GE bought, and, the, 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 and I started my own company working for an SA. Then. So there was a significant change. More people were talking to in the, uh, well, maybe I'll tell you. This is the gentleman that we invited, Mastran, Mr. Mastran, about three, two years ago. He was an executive director of the corporate strategy, strategic planning for organizational expansion. We asked him, Jim and I, we were in Lancaster, said, you think we could have survived this thing? Or Absolutely, he said. And he was in the know because he knew all the division. So that made me feel better, but in the meantime, the company was gone already. So it was a major change. In fact, they... Well, Jim will tell you more about that. There were several steps of transition and things like that. And um, every, we all know that the RCA family bond was very tight. Um, can you talk about like the social life a little bit with the company and outside of the company? Well, RCA, from the very beginning, 1919, saw the future into technology, new advancement, and they always thought of the next program. They had so many firsts over the years. RCA was in business 66 years in Southern South Jersey, and Camden was the headquarter. Everything that was developed, they go into other divisions, uh, television 1939, uh, color television 1954. So that was the hub of what uh, Camden what really became of RCA. The concept of family was a serious one. Today, we go to luncheon to the um, RCA retirees, and they still talk. They remember, we had a family. The idea was that GE in the 40s, after the war, changed from uh, military support to our government to commercial, begin to realize that the, there were unions involved, management had to play a role which governs as opposed to dictate. And I honestly I believe that they did that. They began to ask people who worked at RCA, I said, is your wife finish your high school? So you to ask her to come and apply for a job in accounting or secretary. And who the next two, three years this significant number of people all of a sudden had two members of the family. Two major improvements. One, to the family. Second, second uh, income. Never had it before. Women in South Jersey here, they, maybe they were 20, 30 secretaries, but in general they don't have any work. The other was uh, to the demographics, because by having this, they begin to buy better house, bigger housing. In the meantime, they creation of a hub of technology in South Jersey, but 4,500 engineers from all over the country, and some from other countries like me, um, and 12,000 people. So I call that that became a very serious uh, call, a section of the population called middle class. They, they, they stay there. So GE, deserves the name that they create this idea of family for that. 
And there were a magazine in which you're reflecting this idea that the, the monthly they uh, announce how many people were retiring or promotion, etc., like that. But in all this, RCA create more ideas. For instance, we used to take course in the evening, and then the smart engineer says, hey, you want to hear about this program? And we take them. A lot of engineers, that was the way of adjourning yourself. But even engineers, you know, after four or five years, they become obsolete the less they, they follow up. So RCA knew that, and they have an open how many classes we want to do that. Some of them were sponsored directly from them. Program management was sponsored directly from them. I attended that. The other major issues were that RCA had a magazine which is called The Engineer. Probably the most important, the most important national technical magazine because it reflected all the work that RCA was doing at the research center in Princeton, and most of the patents that RCA was obtaining, they were reflected in that magazine. We have a few dozen, a couple dozen at least, here in the magazine. Those are very valuable for uh, people in interested in research, what RCA was. But RCA, in conjunction with that, David Sarnoff, for the president of the company, the chairman of the board, created an award for people getting the PhD, uh, excuse me, yes, the PhD was one. The other aspect was if they had on a special project that was successful, they named the whole team to win the Sarnoff Award. And every year, I think, I don't know, they were, so this was encouragement to the whole class of people. It wasn't just pick up one or two and give them the, 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 so RCA, in 1969, when we sent the men on the moon and the little guy on, on the back of the carrying that package for the um, security communication, and Armstrong and, uh, what is it? well, the other gentlemen, they talked to the, from the moon to President Nixon and to the world, a small step for men, a giant leap for mankind. Those were RCA words, not RCA words, RCA technology in the making that start to talk from the moon. That's where creating Camden. They, they landed on the moon because RCA had that package of communication. The world became aware that this was happening because RCA had done that. After that, in 69, 70, uh, all many other projects that's the diverse the RCA started diversify records went into Indianapolis and television and so on. But they all of a sudden there's an, an appellative, a name, an adjunct to a name, start to come up and say, RCA, the most trusted name in electronics. They didn't create it, they didn't invent it, somehow it surfaced. And it was accepted, no criticism. I use it all the time in the brochure here, I use it for other reasons here. So th these are the elements which made RCA a, a company that had not only ideas, serious consideration for what was worth for the nation and for the population where they were working, Camden, South Jersey. So that's why the, 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 when RCA disappeared, uh, many people were uh, disappointed. I became one of them, and it took me a few years, but eventually I started this idea of uh, uh, developing RCA's name and legacy again. Yeah, that's what, what's what this is, the RCA Heritage Program, some that I created, and I uh, come to ruin. And fortunately, the president had got a hold of the idea and invited me to lunch, and here we are, almost four years later. This, that was a September 2011. So I'm honored to be on any means that uh, Jim and I are working on this project here. Uh, you working on this project, and other people working on the project. So, so that, that's why I see a, the change stopped all that when it's required. 
fact that they keep selling their divisions to, to other companies. Nonetheless, those people who went from RCA to Lockheed and said, fortunately, they stay at the same desk, the same telephone number, so they never left RCA mentally. Well, Jim thinks he was born at RCA, you know, he was, a, he was only 12 years, but he's been spent 37 years, 25 outside. But there you go, the, the concept of family. Even to, to think about that is uh, unusual, but it is true. These are, these are human beings, these are engineers, professionals, that they think in those terms. Uh, and I, you know, I remember that, and I think that's a pretty good uh, stage in my life that I can really enjoy this opportunity. So I'm just uh, to yes? sum everything up. Can you just sum up your career overall at RCA and what you'll remember most? The career at RCA. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. RCA had a structure, uh, first level manager, which they call leader, and then so on and so forth. I became a, a leader. I was here about, I was a senior engineer when I was hired, project engineer, in fact. And I think within a year or so, I became a leader and became a manager. And uh, <clears throat> but. These were opportunities because we in Camden we had about 300 projects from 50,000 to 50 million or more. So young engineer coming there, they had the opportunity to search. Hey, maybe I want to work on tape recorders. Maybe I want to work on on um, on some other project. This was a, no other company had that opportunity, at least around the, the East Coast. So uh, having that alone, you know, induced me to um, endeavor to do the best I could to get into the management structure, and I did. Uh, from engineer, I went to the program management, which means managing program from the viewpoint of dealing with the customer, bringing it in, produce the equipment to ship them and so on. <clears throat> it's a small business aspect of the whole company. <coughs> Excuse me. And then after that, I grew more interested in creating the GVP, Government Valley Production, I mentioned to you before. So I, I, a tremendous reward for a little immigrant with an accent, you know. <laughs> I, I thought that was pretty good. Um, can you touch on your supervisors and co-workers you had along the Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The, um, at the beginning, the, stu the, the uh, Ordovian was a group of about 150 people, maybe 70 engineers, marketing and all that. And uh, our manager was a gentleman named Anthony, Tony Janetta, very good man, very good guy, quiet. With it. And the idea of, uh, his idea of managing was having meeting, but also recognizing that some of the senior people were essential to help the young guy that just come in. That's, they created this position in engineering, double A, which is the highest level technical you had to have in order to be part of that. That's pretty good because they were making the equivalent money of a manager. That's how well they were treated. I, I, I became one a few years after like that. So the, from that it grew up that the program manager, or the, he, was, he was, became vice president, Osborne, Jim Osborne, and he uh, began to use his own way of doing it and uh, but it was always rewarding in the sense that you had a place you know where you were oh yes there were disappointment and this and that naturally but the idea if you keep looking forward and said next year i want to be there i'm going to try doing my best and you just work maybe work maybe you'll win maybe you lose but 
I, in my case, I had more wins than losses, and I'm very happy the way it ended. You know, I, I was a, became a vice president of RCA. That's pretty good, <laughs> I think. Did you have any like coworkers or anything that you did, any coworkers that you had any specific memories about? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. There's a lot of them. Um, one is called Jim Fair. We were about the same. He joined the RCA uh, a couple of years before, and he started from the shop. Then I went to engineering and got dragged, so we became, we became a friend immediately. His family was close to my family. He used to go to one-day trips and like that. Jim became chief engineer. Over 600 engineers they reported to him. A very good position. So we're still friends. He lives in Florida most of the time with him. Bob Chan, probably one of the smartest engineers that I ever met in my life. And I, uh, he became manager of engineer. They never gave me the title. I think he deserved it more than anyone else, but they never did the ask. Um, but we're still friends. We still have lunch. Uh, we were a group of five or six for 20 years. Then it became five, four, three, and now it's just Jim, Bob Chen and I that we go to a Chinese restaurant. He's Chinese, so we've got to go to a Chinese restaurant, someplace, which is all right, that's fine. There were others uh, that became friends socially, uh, go out for dinner once in a while, yeah. The, uh, I, I can name names. And, but yes, it, it was a part of the, the structure lended itself to have be closer to you, to, to you, to your people. I mean, to the people on the other level of management, or even other divisions. There is other divisions. We used to exchange people during the time of, of a, when we put in major proposals. They would be invited by us to come there to create a red team, meaning to read the specification, see if our reply was really sufficient, good enough to what the government had asked. We always had a government pro contract or something like that. So that created a rapport with these people. We had in Hamden, we had a very good cafeteria, and, and so that was another good reason to meet that we go to the Nipper. No, it was on lunch and of that side. So yes, it, it was a, um, it still is, it still is, you know. It's, and can you talk about RCA's impact on South Jersey overall, just a little bit? Well, uh, RCA started 1919, here in October 1919, and quickly became a major broadcaster company. That's what the, the reason was that during the World War I, uh, there was a, a entrepreneur, an Italian, happens to be Tim Marconi, who created the wireless communications. And during the war, First World War, he made his fortune. I had a company here in New Jersey and one in England. So immediately after that, the Undersecretary of the Navy, Mr. Roosevelt, uh, Delano Roosevelt, who became a vice president eventually, asked the GE, said, form a company to buy all the patents that Marconi has, so we own them here, and we produce the equipment. Sure enough, they did. That was 1919, just right after the war, and the first war ended in 1918. So GE headed that package of new ideas. The, 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 the beauty of that was that they were supported by General Electric, which was a major company, Westinghouse and Wilson also an investment. So they start to do design on this equipment. However, the product was done by GE and Westinghouse, they're producing it. Until 1935, and eventually in 1935, RCA announced the first production facility in Camden. And since, that, and since then, they expanded design people and so on. So their participation in, uh, in the social aspect, it wasn't just 
once in a while, giving a party, you know, picking it before a few of the employees. It was an all year round, meaning that RCA had an open house. When there's an open house, I mean, the family, the employees can go and visit that. You should see it. There's a, there's a half town that would go there. Maybe they didn't understand very much the technical stuff that they see. But it was major, major contributor to the RCA commitment to this kind of uh, actions, which were unusual. So the NGO, I, 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 one thing that struck me that was working for RCA was that if you had a neighbor who didn't work for RCA, and you just all of a sudden just go, oh, you work for RCA, that's a good company. So that in itself was a, a value assigned to the company by strangers, just because you were working for them, you know, and they know you, you think you're a pretty good guy, and they say you work for the company. So they had this good name, no rap, even with the unions, a strike less than a day or two, that kind of thing. We had a very good rapport, very good relation. So, uh, and, and grew up till 60,000 people, uh, the whole company. A division in Ohio doing ships, Indianapolis doing the television, and the, what it's called, the disc, the disc, the video disc. And in Boston they're doing a, uh, test equipment, in Morristown doing uh, the uh, t uh, the tire satellites, and the biggest one was right here in uh, Morristown, which became the supplier of the Navy, the American Navy, over the uh, launching and the controlling <coughs> program for all the frigates and the ships. That we have a cup that says how many there were there, and now that is owned by uh, Lucky. Another company, very good company, things like that. So all these, these were all born here. All of a sudden, there was a group who was doing well. They started a little nucleus. Six months they grow here, then a year and a half later they find a room in Boston. So they hear you from now on you build test equipment for the army, that kind of thing. So it was the maintain maintenance of the rather than scattering all this management across the country, which they could have, many people do. They retained our nucleus in Camden, which was the uh, focus, they dedicated, you know. You, you see, people there in Camden worked 45 years. Well, you, you, you saw their little thing. 45 years in Camden. Some of them, they never went to Tomorrowstown. They just, just strictly in Camden. And their children, I, Having seen a husband and wife working there and a couple of their children, nothing unusual. This was when RCA invited them to say, bring your family to work here. It worked. I had my, my secretary, husband was a manager in manufacturing. I hired their daughter, a software engineer, brilliant. And their son was going to Washington University. And I would hire for the summer to do work in the, uh, in the stock room, you know. It's not unusual uh, to, to see this. It, uh, Jim probably will tell you more than that, because um, good company, good name. If we revive it a little bit, we're doing okay. I like that.